the existence of a strong relationship between diet and cardiovascular disease has been evident for a long time and has been the focus of numerous scientific investigations over the last century. One of the earliest observations regarding this link was the great variability in fat consumption among different populations around the world. A key personality in this area of investigation was Dr. Ansel Keys, an American scientist with lots of different interests. He first graduated in economy and political science from Berkeley, then got a master in biology, a PhD in oceanography, and finally a second PhD in physiology. His first studies in the field of nutrition date back to World War II, when he was asked to lead a research project investigating the physiology of fasting in order to develop the ideal diet for American soldiers. He came up with the famous wartime K ratio, where K stands indeed for keys. Very soon, however, his attention was caught by the relationship between diet and cardiovascular disease. In the early 50s, he had observed that the incidence of these diseases was way higher among the more affluent social circles who had the better nutrition, at least according to the guidelines of their time, when better nutrition meant lots of animal proteins. On the other side of the ocean, instead, in that Europe which was just coming out of the horrors of World War II and was still struggling with problems of food scarcity, the incidence of cardiovascular disease was surprisingly declining. Keyes hypothesized the existence of a link between the levels of fat in the diet and the incidence of these diseases. To prove his theory, he began to travel all around the world with his team, collecting lots of data about the levels of fat consumption in different countries and the incidence of cardiovascular disease. In the meantime, he also wrote a popular book, Eat Well and Stay Well, in which he explained his ideas about diet and health. This book was a great success and made him very well known, so much so that in 1961 the Time magazine dedicated him a front cover. Five years later, he published the first result of his study, where he compared the data he collected in seven different countries around the world. By looking at this data, a clear correlation was evident. The higher the intake of total fat in a country, the higher the incidence of cardiovascular disease in that country. The results of this work, which soon became known as the Seven Countries Study, had enormous repercussions in the scientific community and the population at large. It was the basis of the so-called lipid hypothesis. An excessive dietary intake of lipids increases the risk of cardiovascular disease. This concept was incorporated in virtually all the nutritional recommendations of the U.S. government the USDA, as well as the guidelines of the American Heart Association. The take-home message to the population at large basically boiled down to one simple concept that still lies in the back of the mind of many individuals. Fat in food is a bad thing. And animal fats are the worst. The USDA food pyramid was developed in which consumption of fats and oils was clearly identified as public enemy number one, being at the very tip of the pyramid, together with sweets, while grains were placed at the basis of the diet. The work and passion of Dr. Keyes for studying the relationship between diet and disease prevention was pivotal and commendable, much like the governmental guidelines which were full of good and honest intentions. Unfortunately, however, Ansel Keyes didn't get it quite right. He was focusing all his attention on just one aspect of a much more complex problem in which, as we shall see, many more factors come into play. The truth of the matter is, the total amount of fats in our diet is not a problem at all. To tell the whole truth, we know today that Ansel Keys wasn't completely honest in choosing those seven countries included in the study that consigned him to history. They weren't chosen at random but hand-picked by Dr. Keyes based on preliminary data so that he would get those results beautifully confirming the theory that already made him famous with the book he published several years before. Besides, during one of his expeditions, he ended up in the Greek island of Crete, where he collected some apparently conflicting data. The people in Crete 
were following a diet with an extremely high fat consumption, more than 40% of the total energy, that according to Dr. Key's predictions should have put the population at an extremely high cardiovascular risk. But the facts were telling another story. The incidence of cardiovascular disease in Crete was the lowest in the world. Back then, Dr. Keyes wasn't much concerned with these data, and he simply decided, very conveniently, to make them disappear from his early publications. But these observations were in fact vital, because they prove one notion that we today know very well. It's not the total amount of fat in a person's diet that is related to cardiovascular disease, but the quality of these fats. In the Greek diet, less than 10% of all those lipids came from saturated fats. Their fat consumption came mostly from olive oil, olives, and fish. And at the same time, they were also eating a lot of fiber and phytochemicals from fresh fruit and vegetables. While Ansel Keys later acknowledged the importance of fat quality, he never gave up the idea that total fat is bad, in spite of many documented cases in literature that always made that point. An early widely documented case in scientific literature was a study on the Eskimo population, which was conducted in the 1920s by the explorers Wilhelm Stephenson and Carsten Anderson. During their expedition, they were extremely impressed by the Eskimos' diet. It was basically devoid of carbohydrates, with fasts contributing 70-80% to of the energy intake, especially in winter time, when they mostly ate fatty fish and caribou meat. With this apparently extremely unbalanced diet, not only they lived long lives, but obesity, hypertension, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease were virtually unknown. Already back then, somebody hypothesized that maybe these Eskimos had a different metabolism, as if they somehow evolved differently than the rest of humanity, so that they could adapt to survive with such limited and imbalanced food sources. But the two above-mentioned explorers didn't buy this. They volunteered for one year to undergo a dietary intervention under observation at Bellevue Hospital in New York. During this period, they went on an Eskimo diet of 2,500 daily calories, 75% from fat, mostly from fish and meat. After one year, not only hadn't they gained any weight, but they had shed about 7 pounds each, they were totally healthy, and their blood triglycerides and cholesterol were perfectly normal. 